Question 3. DS. Is the absolute value of x equal to the absolute value of y minus 1? Condition 1. x plus y equals 1. Condition 2. x minus y equals 5. Solution. Now we will solve this DS question using the variable approach. Relationship between the variable approach method and common mistake types 3 and 4a or b. Follow the first step of the variable approach by modifying and rechecking the original condition and the question. We have to find out whether the absolute value of x is equal to the absolute value of y minus 1. Let's modify the original condition and apply CMT1 which says that we should get a unique yes or no as the answer for the condition to be sufficient. Also, this is an absolute value question, and therefore, we will have to apply CMT3 or 4A or B. Follow the second and third steps. From the original condition, we have two variables, x and y. To match the number of variables with the number of equations, we need two equations. Since conditions 1 and 2 will provide one equation each, C would most likely be the answer. Recall three principles. Choose C as the most likely answer. Taking both conditions together, we get x plus y equals 1 and x minus y equals 5. So adding both equations, we get 2 times x equals 6 or x equals 3 and y equals negative 2. Plugging the values in, absolute value of x equals absolute value of y minus 1, we get the absolute value of 3 equals the absolute value of negative 2 minus 1, which equals the absolute value of negative 3, which equals 3. So, C should be the answer as we get a unique answer of yes, and the conditions combined are sufficient by CMT1. Thus. C seems to be the answer. However, this is an absolute value question, and an easy C as an answer requires us to look for 4A. That is, we have to consider the answer to be A or B. So, we have to look at the relationship between the VA and CMT 4A before finalizing our answer. That means we need to consider each condition separately. Condition 1 tells us that x plus y equals 1. That is, x equals 1 minus y. This further tells us that the absolute value of x equals the absolute value of 1 minus y. And logically, we know that the absolute value of y minus 1 equals the absolute value of 1 minus y. So we can say that the absolute value of x is equal to the absolute value of y minus 1. We get a yes as a unique answer. So this condition is sufficient by CMT1, which means that the answer must be in terms of a unique yes or no. Condition 2 tells us that x minus y equals 5. If x equals 3 and y equals negative 2, the answer is yes. But if x equals 4 and y equals 1, the answer is no. We do not have a unique answer. And therefore, the condition is not sufficient by CMT1, which means that you get both yes and no as the answer. It is not sufficient. You should remember the solving process. Be sure to keep in mind that variable approach, check whether the answer is C or not, and check whether the question is a key question or not, apply CMT 4A. These sequences are very important. If the question has both C and A as its answer, then A is an answer rather than C by the definition of DS questions. Condition 1 alone is sufficient. So, A is the correct answer. Answer, A. Another way to solve this question. This is a better solution, which is closer to the standard variable approach. The answer is determined by the modification the first step of the variable approach. If you build up your skills, you can solve the questions more rapidly and accurately. 
Follow the first step of the variable approach by modifying and rechecking the original condition and the question. Then, we have to find out whether the absolute value of x is equal to the absolute value of y minus 1. This can be written as x equals y minus 1, or x equals negative y minus 1, which equals negative y plus 1, which equals 1 minus y. Since the absolute value of a is equal to the absolute value of b, then a equals positive or negative b. Let's look at condition 1, which it tells us that x plus y equals 1. That is, x equals 1 minus y. So we get yes as an answer. So, the answer is unique, so this condition is sufficient by CMT1. Condition 1 alone is sufficient. So, A is the correct answer.